Uh, anyway, <laughs> we're doing uh, Apikula <laughs> stuff today, and I am joined by Dan, who Hi. I met on Twitter by doing stuff with 780 logic chips and Yosis. And it's kind of spiraled out of control from there. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> recently I have been working on decoding the timing database of the going FPGAs. And Dan has been working on integrating things into Yosis. Yep. Uh, um, so actually maybe what I would what we could do is start out by yeah showing kind of how this decoding step works and maybe you can also show a bit how your Yosis stuff works. Sure, that sounds good. You uh, have the team Mux after all. Yeah, and then <laughs> we can dive into uh, adding new stuff. So yeah, basically the plan is I believe that uh, I decoded the block RAM timings and yeah. we'll try to add those uh, to Yosis. And if you look at, I think it's this tab, it's basically my parser code. Uh, all these things are fields from BlockRAM, so there's a lot of them. So we'll have to uh, make sense of this eventually. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'll switch to another. I mean, can you see my screen on the on the stream or should I share my screen with you? Uh, I have the Tmux open in my terminal, so it's fine. Yeah, but I mean, I, I want to do like the, the the the. I have the stream open. Yeah. Ah, okay, then then you can see my stuff mm -hmm. that's going on, not on the server. Um. Yeah. So basically, uh, in the Goin IDE, there's this timing database, and basically, the way to I decoded it is basically. Uh, mm -hmm. Open it in GDB and set the breakpoint on file open, and then just step through until you see the the timing file <laughs> pass by, mm -hmm. and then this I opened in uh, like I opened their 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 library in Kitra. Um and then that was uh, this function. Read timing data before version, and uh, yeah, I had this breakpoint op yeah this uh, open, and then from here you can see. Basically, yeah. it it reads it just reads the file as a struct, uh, and then it casts it to a timer model or TM model. Mm -hmm. So from there, I just went like, okay, let's see what uh, TM model brings up. And this basically gives you a lot of subclasses uh, from T model and also getters for this particular. Uh, yeah, so for example, in this case, the get VRAM TM model, it just returns this offset from the struct. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's also what you see in the file here, uh, down here. That's this number, basically. Oh, no, uh, this number. And then from there, you can see that on these classes, <coughs> uh, there's lots of getters and setters. And I have this, uh, like, yeah, just object dump grab uh, for TM model. Uh, and you get this, uh, where is it? Do I have it open? No, I do not. Well, basically, I just grab for all the getters and setters that are in the library. Um, and you get like this kind of stuff where it's like a getter for the D of an ALU to the F of the ALU. And you can see it's just like a float at a particular offset. Um, so that basically corresponds to uh, what we had open here. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you go to the ALU. It's an incredibly organized stream, this. Yeah, it's, it's just basically, it's all floats <laughs> uh, in a big struct. Uh, yeah, so ALU, I just, you know, ordered them in the correct 
way, mm -hmm. and then you just read A to F, B to F, D to F, and each each of these is basically a series of four floats inputs and outputs yeah yeah and you and uh, yeah what you thought is that they probably like what the, the uniqueness that you explained yeah so um you can have like, a signal will rise on or fall on the input and rise and fall on the output and uniqueness describes essentially how like the timing between an input rising causing an output to rise and vice versa mm-hmm yeah, so there's like like input up, output down, input up, output up, and then select all the all the four combinations yeah. basically. Um, yeah, so I think if you run this now, yeah, it's already here. Uh, this will just go over the this timing database and parse one by one uh, all these fields. And one thing that you decoded and that I have not integrated yet um, is basically another function that we found that decides uh, because there's like eight copies I believe of everything yeah it's due with the timing grade I think yeah yeah so there's like this yeah, speed grades for every device and different like there's there's two different settings for each that we don't completely understand what they mean I can send you the code if you want to throw it in I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, it's, but uh, it's, it's not super important for now. But it's basically different timing speeds for each device. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I assume like, okay, yeah, so for the LUT it's like pretty straightforward. It's like, you know, from the A input to the F output. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you don't go to B RAM, there is a, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe now you can show a bit what you have been doing on the Yosis side. Right, so, um, can I quit this? I'm assuming so. Right. Let's go into Yosis. Set clips, go in. Right. So, let's take look four. So, in order to specify the timings to uh, ABC9, you have to use a Verilog specify block. Mm -hmm. which is, it, is it actually part like of this. a Verilog standard, or is it just like something you This is actually right? part of the Verilog standard, oh, okay. for better or worse. So, essentially with a specify block, you're specifying, well, clues in the name, from an input like I0, to an output like f the in this case the rising time and the falling time and then abt9 will then just pick the biggest one because it's optimistic and pessimistic and it doesn't understand timing very well hmm. actually also maybe before going into this it's interesting to explain like why 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 even yosis needs to know this uh, basically, as I understand it, uh, ABC1, which, which is what most of the targets use now, is just like assumes a very simplistic model of lookup tables and everything. For example, uh, every input has identical delay time, which, as you can tell from these numbers, doesn't hold true in practice. Right. So ABC9 is sort of like a more newer, I assume, version that... Yes. Does timing and the aware. other thing it has, the other thing it has is white boxes, which I will expl well boxes in general, which I'll get to in a bit. Okay. Uh, so the core cool idea of ABC nine is by using specify blocks, thanks to Eddie's recent work, because I'm going to point out how difficult and painful it was to write out one of these boxes by hand. Uh. These gets turned into specified blocks uh, when given the ABC9 lot attribute. Uh, the number here is the area value to give to ABC9. All right, so like so, a, a lot five is made of two lot four, so it gets an area of. So it gets an area of two. Okay. And as you can see, it gets exponentially bigger. 
And these are the relatively simplistic syntax, which is a combinational path from IO that directly affects the output in L. Unfortunately, this doesn't hold true for things like flops. So then you get to the more awkward syntax here. Okay. So what this says is that on the positive edge of clock, the data which is at D will go to the data at Q. And this takes 480 picoseconds is the, or 660 picoseconds. So this is the arrival time. Essentially, it's the time for the delay from clock to reach Q. Mm -hmm. And is that the two numbers just rising and falling time, or like worse yes. or best case? Or? Rising and falling. Oh. You can do it technically in three, which is worst, average, and best, but those aren't the numbers we have, and mm, okay. uh, it's not worth it. And then you get into setup times, and setup times are right when the pos on the positive edge of clock, mm. positive edge of clock, the output of D changes. So the time from clock changing to D causing a change is five hundred seventy-six picoseconds, which is the setup time. Typically, isn't typically the setup time like the time? the data needs to be stable before the clock edge? Uh, that's hold time, if I remember correctly. My timing, my knowledge of timing models like this isn't the best, but oh, okay. that's what this I've is how I remember understand from it. from FPGA's classes in university that, like, set, as I, like I remember, like setup is the time the, set, the signal needs to be stable before the clock edge, and hold is this, the time it needs to be stable after the clock edge. And if I remember correctly, uh, Yosis doesn't really, really do hold times at all. It can pass hold times, but it doesn't do anything with this information, so it's not very relevant. Okay. Uh, right. My own explanation for this kind of things that I use is a what Eddie mentioned in a PR. Because I had no idea how most of this works before I came into like the FPGA stuff. But right. All right. So this is that anyway. Yeah. So this is the setup time. And this is setup time, which is uh, required time. So it's essentially the time it's got to be. Mm. Yeah, it's the time that, between D and the positive edge of the clock. So it's the yeah, time before. So yes, you were right. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's basically saying the same thing, but uh, from, from the other's perspective. From the... mm -hmm. And this is the time from a positive edge of the clock turning, res turning a result in Q. And then you can get into slightly more complicated syntax, such as you can have this trigger of CE. But ABC9, as far as I can tell, doesn't really care about that. So the, you, these are equivalent, oh, like this okay. and this are equivalent as far as ABC9 is concerned. But basically, it's just saying like if the clock enable is enabled, then the the delay is this, otherwise there's no delay, or what? Like, the original design for specified blocks like this is that you have the simulators working in ticks instead of events. Mm -hmm. And each of these takes a tick. So what it's saying is that... Sorry. On positive edge of clock, you then have... You then fire an event, which, for example, here you have a setup check, which is that when on the positive edge of clock and CE is high, then check that the, check the delay between clock and D changing is at least 576 picoseconds. Right. And that's kind of how it's designed to work. But in practice, modern Verilog simulators really don't care about this kind of thing, and they work purely based on events. 
and I'm not faster for it. Hmm. This is like ASIC grade timings, just to make sure that everything is correct. Right. Yeah, so ABC9 is kind of a simplified model compared to the real world, because it also doesn't deal with routing, basically. Mm hmm. Well, in general, synthesis doesn't really know about routing. Mm -hmm. But as you will note here from the highlighted lib white box attribute, this is a box. And what that means to uh, ABC9 is that you can't modify the internals of this, but this is what the internals look like, and this is what they do. Mm. So it can reason and, about it better, basically. Yes. Uh, Eddie's got a PR, which is meant to turn these into ABC9 sequential synthesis. So then it can do timings based on them. But for now, they're just sort of boxes where ABC9 knows what they do, but what does the Can't. sequential synthesis exactly do? Is that where you synthesize the flip the flip flops with ABC nine as well, or? Yes, that includes ABC nine. Essentially, it can move flops along a path to meet a given timing. Ah, okay. It's like a retiming kind of thing. Yes, register retiming is a form of sequential synthesis. Ah, okay. This makes sense. And then you can get into stuff which is more black box, like the RAMs. <laughs> I see. Where we don't even, we don't have a model of it. So ABC9 has no idea what this does. It's just got inputs here and outputs and some magic happens and then there's a signal that comes out. Mm-hmm. And then we can provide timings for these things, so it's slightly better. But at the moment, the timing is zero, okay. which means that magically, when a clock happens, you get outputs. And this is obviously not how the real world works. So today, we're going to fix that. Right, so we are going to open our timing database and sort of try to match... Uh, yes. <laughs> these random strings we got from the vendor database to uh, specify blocks on this BRAM uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And we can also do it for LUT RAM if we have a LUT RAM model. Yeah, so this is uh, this, this, yeah. interesting because uh, if you uh, do we still have it open somewhere? Uh, no, I guess not. You, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, so uh where was that? Uh here. Um uh wait. <laughs> we probably closed that. Uh, not intentionally. Oh, no, no, uh, yeah, okay, let me see. So uh this one. Yeah, so there's bars S REM and bars B REM. And like you would think that SRAM stands for static RAM, which BRAM is also. Um, my other theory is that SRAM is the uh, sort of. I think this is LUT RAM by the values there are, because if we go back to the Yosis model we have, uh, which is there, as you can see, like there are four values, four inputs from the width. So my assumption is that these reflect those four bits per look RAM. Um, yeah, okay, I, I buy that. Um, so do the pin outs also me match this LUT RAM block? Because we have... Uh, no, but I want to point out the pins we had f before for, like, the LUT models. That doesn't match what the vendor model is. But oh. it doesn't matter as long as we can mentally translate it. I can open the vendor documentation for this and see... Uh, Go ahead. Um, 
primitive user guide. So we have uh, block of SRAM. No, that's not what we want, right? We want Let's see, close all the stuff. CLU, CFU, oh, SSRAM. Yeah, they call the LUTRAM SSRAM, I think. Shadow RAM, memory. Design. Shadow random. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, this, uh. is the, this is the thing we have uh, in our. Uh, mm -hmm. Right? Seems like. Actually, it does seem too much, or not? Dot out data in AD. Yeah, it, 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 it matches this pin out. So, okay, since so. they call this SSRAM and it matches with what we have here and what we have here, I would. Or does it? Yeah, this, it's, it would say. It would make sense that this is indeed the LUTRAM. Uh, in which case, maybe we should start with this because it's slightly more manageable than the block RAM. Sure. Uh, do you have your, uh, let's see, can we do some uh, TMAX magic to have tabs or like, like split window? I, I think they can do this. Um, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Then we could have one window where we can do, uh, yeah, have the time. Control V, single quote, uh, zero? No, oh, hang on. This is going well. Um, <laughs> I mean, with the, with the power of video editing, we can later make this look like we are sort of TMUX wizards. Control B. This one? Yeah? Kinda? Oh. Nope. Mm, <laughs> vertical, yeah. I mean, horizontal would be nicer, I guess, but I mean, this is. Control B. Percent? Pain. Okay. No, vert, yeah, horizontal split is like percent and quote, double quote. Yeah, yeah, you this got is it. You got it. Great fun. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got the fun of trying to switch between tabs. <laughs> okay, let's, let's worry about that later. Or, or while you worry about that, I will get the timing data up there. Um. Control B error. Okay, one second. I'm, I'm uh, mm -hmm. trying to get the uh, going home, uh, which was right, and then we can run the timing. Yes, okay. Uh, and now how do we switch the pane? Control? Control P arrow, apparently. Yeah, oh, you can nice. just about see it change color. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So now we can add a specify block. Yep. So you're using go in one, right? Yeah, or do should I do another one? No, it's fine. We just have to work out which one matches the timings we had for the other one. Right. Because you didn't throw in the speed crates. <laughs> right. Do, do, do. Any? Is it not in my gist? Ugh. I mean, you think you were just using the slowest one, right? Yeah, but it's the slowest one that is a specific entry. Mm, okay. Uh, 
Actually, an idea just came to me. Right. So, we want to pick the... We want to pick the fifth entry down. Okay, so we're now... Okay, let's try to switch back off to the other tab. Okay. Um... I think you can hit N to jump to the next one. So this... Wait, is that still this first one? Yeah, so this, this is the first one. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. Fifth one. Very, yeah. very scientific, very structured. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then we have to try and pass based on the data here. Right. So, my assumption from here is that the ones with hold entries, uh, we might as well write this to a file and then just edit it in Vim as a temporary buffer. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. And we can also have uh, the code open next to it. It'd also be useful. Oh, we have it open in another thing. It must be the other Vim. <laughs> okay, wait. We can go to the thing, close this. Um, we are masters of Tmux. <laughs> 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 Amazing. Right. Okay, so this is the keys that we have basically. Yeah. Um uh, bars. That's from one, two, three, four, five. So this You know, at this point I'd hack your timing scripts a bit in order to just dump the data we needed instead of everything. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Wait, can we control Z for that to kill everything? <laughs> uh, I don't know how to make Vim go back and in, go into the background, but I think like this. Yeah, this works. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah. So okay. So we close this, and we add it. Uh, this part to say. <laughs> So if, if, and name equals bars sram, uh, should we just do it? Should we just add a timer? Is this uh, you actually want to use the, the specifically the fifth entry? So yeah. maybe keep counter or something. Yeah, yeah, or like. Do it all nice and methonic for a quick hack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if name is that. And Idex is. <laughs> Idex is five. Four. Uh, oh, yeah. Zero. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're right. And you also want two equals. Ah, I can't type anymore today. Okay. <laughs> I blame lag. It's all lag. Okay. Mm. Mm. Should work. Let's see. Let's do what I wanted to do. Oh, looks good. Okay. Timing.txt. There you go. Much better, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and to make it even more pretty. I am going to do something ugly. I think you can do this, right? Haha! -ha. Not quite what I wanted. Excellent. This will do. Let's try comma. No, that was a mistake. <laughs> okay, one more try. Closing bracket. 
Might have to mute my mic in a sec. Oh, so pretty. Perfect. Uh, okay, meanwhile I'll uh, stare at this data for a bit. Right. Ah, you're back. <laughs> I'm not going for that long. I wouldn't abandon you on your own stream. <laughs> right. What I'm a bit confused by is that we have RAD and VR. VAD, which I assume has to do with this AD. Uh, I'm imagining those read and write. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to casually get rid of the hold ones because we really don't need them. Okay, yeah, true. <laughs> so that gives us read and write timings. And if I'm going to be honest, these are all identical. So we just need oh, to yeah, care actually, about those. I, I noticed this in the file as well. Like, there was an entry for rad without a number. Uh, and, yeah, if you, if, you, if you go over to the other tab, I think I made a note of it in the... Uh, yeah, see, also unnumbered. Like, rad mm. without anything also points to the same index. So you're... you're yeah, I don't think this is much for it. <laughs> yeah, your, your, your assumption that to delete them, I think, is justified. So, then we just have read and write. Ah, this looks pretty manageable now. So, these timings then say we have read of address to data out. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of specify, we probably want... That's probably something like this, right? So uh, we want to pass from address to data out. So let's get rid of the read write. I'm presuming that's like a write or read enable. Mm -hmm. And then for that, rising edge, well, the rising edge is the same. So, actually, no, it's not. I've seen the wrong end. So, highest one is, call it 270 on rising edge, and 405 on the falling edge. that look okay to you? Um, I'm still trying to, like, I, I'm, I'm not quite following your, uh, like, how, how do you map read and write to... Uh, what we're seeing in the Yosis side? Are you saying like if, if there's no write enable, it's a read? I right. So if we go back to the model, so here we have these which are continuous reads. So it will there will always be the address to. So I guess you could argue that's actually a combinational path. Yeah, I'm going to script that as a combinational path. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, it's just like there's, it, doesn't, it doesn't concern the clock, it's just always the address on the outputs, basically. Yeah. So this is the delay from the change in address causing a change in the data out. So then we can switch tabs and we have this done. So I'm going to, I don't know, hash. Hmm. Let's just delete the line. Uh, I would keep it for a <laughs> second. Just like, I don't know. Yeah, just comment it out or something. Like, yeah, just make it clear we dealt with it basically, but not outright remove it. So then we have clock di set. Um, uh, so that's going to be a setup path. Ah, oh, yes, it's all the setup. Okay, I see. Uh, I am going to go and, and steal for myself here. <laughs> so, 
so that would be the pen. So we're looking for setup on so the thing about setup timing here is that if you look in the data mm -hmm. we have positive and we have rising edge here and rising edge and falling edge yeah However, a setup doesn't accept both rising and falling edge, so there are two ways to do it. You either specify like positive edge di having a value, neg edge di having a value. Yeah, that seems like or, right. or you do what I do, which it seems to be what Eddie does, and basically I am following what Eddie does here, which is just have a single value, which is worst case. Um. Tell you what. Nope. Control D. I'm, I'm going to use the pause edge method and see how that goes. 540. Oh, pause edge on dy. I would. I was. I thought he would read net neck edge on clock. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, <laughs> okay. but no, I think it's, well, you might be right, it's difficult to tell. <laughs> but as I mentioned, there's no output here, so... I have a separate microphone. It's just my micro. I don't have a microphone stand, so it's not. Ooh, so it's in front of my keyboard. Pepin, could you turn me down on your end then? Oh, Maybe. What, what, what's, what's the problem? Complaining about oh, my typing being too loud on the oh, microphone. In the chat. My... Yeah. I have not. Don't have the chat open. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't have a microphone uh... stand for it. I'll I'll put the the chat in my my the, the stream energy in my other window, sorry that I can keep an eye on the chat as well. Uh, so my microphone's just resting on resting on my monitor in front of me. Yeah, I mean, then, there's not yes, nothing much we can do is... about it. I'm just like, yeah, uh, <laughs> it would be better to have a microphone, but I mean, I'm sure people will survive listening to. Clicky, clicky, nice clicky sounds. I mean, <laughs> don't you enjoy this? Like, ah, uh, I could like, listen to it this all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because of my set microphone. It's a condenser that you can actually hear the clicks as well as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, okay, maybe what we should do is just stick to worst case for now and make a note to ask this to Eddie what the proper way to do mm -hmm. it is. then you probably know that condenser microphones are fairly sensitive. It's unfortunate, and I'm sorry about it, but there's not much I can do about it. Uh, right. So we have... Switch the other one. And then we have a setup time from remote read enable. 
you pass it to clock. And this is also 540. Surprise. Wait, aren't we switching to the 624 now because it's the, fa the, the falling edge? Ah, yeah, sorry. Good catch, thank you. I mean, I'm all for, all for all being optimistic, but. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then we have one from what, which would be I think AD. It's probably AD. Yeah, that, that's why I was why I was why I was wondering about this, this RAD and this WAD. Like it could be read and write, uh, but that's why where it was super clear what it all means basically. Like it seems like if you look in the model. Uh, add is shared between read and write. Right. That's how I understand this, if that makes sense. What does AD even do, actually? It's memory address. Ah, oh, the address input. I see. Data in, clock. Yeah, this makes sense. It's shared, yeah. And then we have data out on pause edge clock. And that's that's a synchronous path. So here we have a fun bit of syntax. As I understand it, the correct thing to do here is to output x. Uh, if I can remember how. There we go. The, what this is basically saying is that you can't not specify like where it's coming from, but mm -hmm. it's <laughs> so you just throw in x and oh, you say, like, say it's from, undefined. From undefined to data out is uh, this number. Yeah. Ah, okay. 474 on the rising edge and 565 on the falling edge. Right? Yeah, I guess. Sounds good. Let's see. Yeah. yeah that's it? Yep. Okay. That was easier than expected, I guess. <laughs> Although, you won't really see it from... It's unlikely to have any immediate effects. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd need to use something like the static timing in that analyzer, which is in a Yosis branch, right. to actually possibly see a critical path through it and how it changes. Does the, timing, does the timing analysis actually influence synthesis or it just gives you a number, basically? It tells you the critical path through your, through the logic, ignoring routing delays. Right. Because it doesn't know about routing delays. Makes sense. And I actually do have a branch which includes the static timing analysis along with going but <laughs> we're not going to show it here because it will set us back two hours of compile time i guess <laughs> it's not that long oh. but yeah <laughs> but is there, is there any way we can at least verify this sort of works that we sort of uh, um achieved anything right we didn't break anything at least Okay. Right. So as you can see, it's now thrown the updated one into Yosis's share. Mm -hmm. So if we had something that we could build, um, well, I suppose there's like the lot round test in. Yeah, we could try that. And then you see, <laughs> right. <laughs> Specify that width does not match DST width. Well, I'm assuming here DST is destination. 
Yes, Andre, it's in the units here for ABC9 are picker seconds, and the units that the vendor times are in are nanoseconds. By convention, Yosis uses picker seconds. Yeah. They're arbitrary units, but this is what we use. <laughs> um... Right. Width. I think I know what that might be. Well, I got close enough. So I think it's this. Oh. Okay, yeah. I think that's correct. Looks reasonable. You're just making like sure that this random thing where your thing came from is actually the same yeah. as sure. I mean, I don't know nothing about Verilog, so you could have just told me that, like, without a number, it was just like an arbitrary width or something. <laughs> no, the Verilog standard specifies, if you don't define it, it's the standard integer width, which is 32 bits wide. Mm, okay. And this catches people out, because of course it catches people out, because this is Verilog. <laughs> of course you would do the least obvious thing, yeah. Right. Try again. That looks more hey. promising. Right. Ooh. So let's make a note in here. Uh, right. Now this is not being cop. This is not copyable. And <sighs> thanks, Windows Terminal. So. now if you look on the top the abc dell equals 2646 oh yeah which means the best solution that it found had a delay of 2646 pick seconds mm -hmm. I see. so then we're going to go back to this escape out of that or just like abc one <laughs> uh, yeah, okay no, it doesn't just show you probably. Ugh. Oh, eh. That's fu Okay, I have an alternative solution. Round 16. As you can see, it just moves everything. Yeah. And then we go back into here and page up. We can see that nothing's happened. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the problem, it's a bit difficult to explore this kind of thing with ABC9 because it's just telling you what the critical path delay is. So. Mm. Yeah, so it might be that that critical pass is not even our LUTREM or something. Yeah. Is that it's somewhere else and the lot round logic is there, but Can you do the combinatorial path to get an idea of what's going on? I mean it's not uh... Um Uh Andrea is complaining about video buffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Are you dropping frames? 
It seems to be okay on my end, but... Yeah, my bitrate seems pretty constant. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. Maybe just try refreshing or something. Or, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if uh, a lot of people are having troubles, I can try to lower the bitrate of the OBS, but it seems... Uh, 286 tech says no problems here, so maybe yeah. it's... Now I'm going to completely butcher this. Oh, I like this idea. Right. Right. So we... Hello. <laughs> right. So we need to somehow get the critical path oh. to be the RAM. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's someone from a university that uh, yep. I gave a board to during a presentation. I guess. Let's see how this goes. I'm sure it can't possibly end up badly, right? <laughs> oh, sir. Eh? I don't even remember where the error was. Unexpected op LA, which would presumably be this one. Uh. No, it's this. Oh, I don't see what the. This is outside of an always block. There we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. So here it's 2393. Three. It's different, it's something. Don't write, we don't need to. Uh. Yes, we are using the RAM cells. Damn it. This push D, I should uh, remember this. And I yeah, it's, it's quite useful. <laughs> Two six nine one. Oh, it's different. Hey, congratulations! We made it slower. <laughs> oh, yeah, this makes sense because we added a delay before it was zero, basically. And just for the sake of curiosity, two hundred ninety-eight picoseconds. Is it any of the numbers we entered? No. But it's possibly the read to data out that looks like it. It's probably read to data out. Yeah, seems close enough, I guess. But it's doing something. It's affecting the <laughs> end result, which is right. the important yeah. part, right? Yeah, wait, can we... Can we... <laughs> mm. Go to the other tab and 
Ah, uh, no, not to that tab. Oh yeah, I'm, what am I have to do? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so it's, it should be this number, but it's like... A uh, larger Not one. quite. What? I'm expecting it to be like 404. 404 picoseconds, because that's the largest one there, and if you switch over... Yeah, but is that actually the one we set in the file? Like if we go back to the film... So seven four five. So I think what we're having here is that it's changing pins based on it to minimize latency. Mm, okay. Because that's the kind of thing ABC nine can do with the timings here. But it's doing something and it's having an effect, which is the important bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, commit and uh, uh, then don't... we get to. The block RAM. Yeah, which... I mean, <laughs> we can we can say like we've we've been we've been going for an hour. We can like call it a day and do it another time, maybe. Do you want to? I mean, like, do you want to con continue several more hours now? <laughs> I've got nothing to do apart from this, so. Uh. Well... Yeah, for me it's more like, you know, talking for an hour and being concentrated for... Uh... I have enough energy to keep going if you want to. Does the audience particularly care? Yeah, we can we can do like a poll, like, oh, do people want to see us suffer through VRAM? <laughs> oh, 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 that's an excellent shout. Thanks for catching that. So, if you look in the Twitch chat, yeah. So the units here are nanoseconds, and if you note, there's a zero. It's point zero five four. Not 0. 0.54. Oh, which we makes just it messed up the number? Yeah. It's okay, we can... I don't know how we... Right. Thanks. Okay. So, 63... 62. <laughs> make sure to document everything and make the documentation is this a reference to something? nice or... uh, bring up my twitter feed I'm a they not a he but scroll down to, until you find my ALM docs Keep going. That's it's a bit further down. Okay. Oh, here's documentation for a day. This. Keep going. Yes, that one. Oh yeah, you're delayed by a bit of the good stream because yeah. Cause no, it was that one. Yeah. And you'll note that the documentation is sixty nine lines long. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice documentation, Lance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, personally, I'm a bit. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, enough for today to. Uh, okay. Do it. Like, it's nice. Like, we made um, some progress. Yeah. We have a nice uh, explanation. It's like a good point to stop. Like, stop at sure. your highest point, right? Don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. 
So I guess I can do a fancy outro for like thanking everyone for being here and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, this kind of stuff. Press the bell for the notifications, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that um... things. And uh, yeah, that's it for t today then. And then I'll figure out how to stop my stream. Stop streaming. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>